Once John Connery departed from the role, producers searched for the next James Bond. A lot of names were passed around, but ultimately, the role went to an Australian model with little acting experience, George Lazenby. Lazenby's first outing was an adaptation of Ian Fleming's Honor Majesty's Secret Service, a book considered by a lot of fans as the best Bond book. Lazenby was facing a huge obstacle. I think any actor would have. Coming in and picking up the role that Connery made his own was an overwhelming task. Up to this point, audiences weren't expecting Bond to be a continuing series with a new actor taking the role every few films. So the first actor to do it must have seemed sacrilegious to some. Producers wanted to get away from all the gadgets and cartoonish elements that started to show up in previous films. They wanted to reel 007 back to earth and get back to the basics of the character Ian Fleming created. This is a battle cry that will be heard time and time again during the run of the series. It seems eventually the Bond films become so outlandish and fantastical, filmmakers decide there's nowhere else to go except back to the fundamental idea of a spy on his own with a license to kill, which is what Honor Majesty's Secret Service does. Majesty's main attention is on Lazenby since it was his only Bond outing, but leaving that aside for a moment, the film is pretty good. The action scenes, the sets, the score, and the first Bond film to have an emotional center to it. It is all nicely done. As Blofeld, Telly Savalas does a cool, suave interpretation of the character. His mountain hideaway is one of the coolest villain locations that have been used. Diana Rigg is not only attractive, but gives a really good performance as Bond's love interest, which makes the ending of the film that much more heartbreaking. And the action scenes are exciting and entertaining to watch. The ski sequences are some of the best done in the series. So Lazenby. I hate to jump on the bandwagon and dump on him, but when it comes to acting the part, he falls short. I never found him charismatic enough that made me get drawn into watching him. I think he does a good job with his fight scenes and he does have some chemistry with Diana Rigg, but overall he just left me cold. Would I have enjoyed the film more with a different actor playing Bond? Probably. Did Lazenby's presence completely ruin it for me? No. To be fair, Lazenby isn't the only thing I disliked in the film. Lofeld's cadre of women at Peace Gloria were annoying and the whole hypnosis scheme left me rolling my eyes. I would have liked to have had more time spent with Diana Rigg than with those women. I also thought the passing of the Bond torch scene, reminding us that this is the same character we've seen before, was a little bit hokey. Due to poor box office, Lazenby being difficult or whatever other reasons, Lazenby didn't return as Bond. Initially, American actor John Gavin, you might remember him from Psycho, was signed to play Bond in Diamonds Are Forever, the next film. But at the last minute, a deal was struck to lure Connery back to the role. Connery's paycheck for returning was like the highest paid to an actor at the time. Despite Connery's return, overall, the film is disappointing. Connery's cool, as always, but it seems his enthusiasm for the part has completely vanished. Charles Gray's Blofeld has completely been reinvented, with only his white cat remaining from the character. He doesn't feel the least bit menacing. The setting of Las Vegas might have seemed exotic at the time, but now looks pretty boring. Seeing Connery in a circus casino just feels tacky to me. While Jill St. John looks smoking in a bikini, she's not really the typical classy Bond girl we've come to expect. Keep leading on that tutor, Charlie, and you're gonna get a shot in the mouth! And the henchmen, Wint and Kid, are more comical than threatening. The action scenes aren't very memorable. The moon buggy chase in the desert seems like something we would expect from Roger Moore a couple years down the road. The car chase on the Vegas Strip is the most fun, even more than the final climax at the oil rig. I'm still amazed at this huge mistake with the car suddenly changing its side. How on earth could they have goofed that up? The one fight Bond has in the elevator is pretty cool, and his encounter with Bambi and Thumper is a memorable scene. So Connery was finished, and once again, producers had to find another actor to step into the role of James Bond. <laughs>